So I was approached by Fatal Core TCG to do an honest sponsored video uh, of their game. So this is completely honest, my thoughts, nothing that they told me to say. They said I could be as mean as I want to. So I said, you know what, I'll do it and decided to check the game out. So this is kind of my overview of the game, how it works, what it is, um, as well as my first impressions and my review of it. So here it is. So Fatal Core is a 100% free to play competitive card game. Um, there's zero purchases at all with real world money and it's developed by a small indie game studio called Cosmic Cog. The game right now is definitely still in beta. There's a full release set for next year on Steam. So things like card art, uh, the UI, things like that definitely subject to change um, and a little bit rough right now. Um, so keep that in mind if you are to play it, that these are not like finalized art assets and they can change at any time, especially things like animations and whatnot. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're looking at gameplay. Um, but something else unique about the game is it's 100% web browser based. So that means you just go to the website to play the game. There's no client or anything to install. Um, so it's played all in a web browser, which is also unique to it. So if you're looking for a browser game, you could do much worse than this, especially if you like card games. I actually myself really like the art style. I like the like grimy dystopian apocalypse feel that it has with the game's art direction. So I'm a fan of the way it's going. Um, I'm excited to see how it works with things touched up like the uh, like card pack opening and some of the animations are a little wonky, um, but it, it definitely is, you know, finished enough to where the games do play pretty well. Um, and all of the core systems, uh, I believe are in the game. Uh, at least I didn't find anything that broke or, or didn't, it didn't feel like super early access playing it, even if some of the uh, animations and visuals aren't necessarily up to par. So looking at this, you may be a little confused because the gameplay is actually really unique um, as opposed to any other card game that I've played. Uh, and, and it's got some unique systems. So the game definitely has more like mind games with your opponent than unit combat. Uh, it, it plays differently than something like Magic the Gathering or Legends of Runeterra, if you're used to that, um, especially coming from my channel, I'm sure you're used to Legends of Runeterra. So it definitely works a lot different like than that game. Um, essentially each turn you get to play one card uh, and you also draw a card at the start of your turn and your opponent plays a card at the same time. Um, you don't get to see what your opponent's playing and you both play them and then they both like resolve at the same time. And then at the end of each turn, uh, units, they both come into play on the their uh, respective board space that you put them on. Um, any of their special effects happen at the same time. And then the spells are played because um, there's units and spells just like in Rune Terra. Um, then, then what happens, any units that are left on the board deal their damage directly to the enemy player's health total, um, which you can see at the top of the screen next to their name. Um, and you're trying to get your opponent's life total to zero and yours not be to zero. Basically, whoever gets to zero first loses the game and you don't want that to happen. The other unique thing about this is the space that you put the units in uh, matters greatly to what happens. So you can see um, underneath the space themselves, you'll see uh, the effect that it has. So this means that um, some spaces might have like a plus one health, minus one attack or vice versa or like a plus one plus one or plus zero plus two whatever um so when you play a unit on that space whatever effect that has actually goes into effect the unit stats um so if it is does have like a minus one health minus one attack you'll see that'll go into play on the unit after it's played there um, the spaces can also have unique effects. So uh, the one I've been playing, there's a space called Mana Magnet, which means when an opponent plays a spell, any unit that's on that space sacrifices itself and it dies, but then it counters the spell, um, which is really cool. You'll see that um, all the different heroes have different game boards, uh, and I'll show you that a little later when I get into like the, the players and cards themselves, but that's just kind of how it uh, the game itself plays out. The most unique thing that also kind of 
threw me for a loop when I first started playing is you each play with your hands facing up. So you can see your opponent's cards, what they have, and they can also see yours. Um, this is where a lot of those like mind games go into play because your opponent knows what spells you have. You know what your opponent has in their hand as well. Um, so when you're deciding which card to play, you don't get to see where they're being played until they resolve. Um, so, you know, sometimes you may want to save your big removal that they know about for a unit, but they could know about that and bluff what they're about to do and play a smaller unit. Um, so it definitely keeps things very, very interesting. Um, at the start of the game, you get to choose two cards in your opening hand to keep hidden from your opponent. And then later on, you get to choose uh, up to one card throughout the game to keep hidden as well. So if you do have like a key card that you don't want your opponent to see, um, you can hide that from them. Uh, but this leads to just some more uh, unique gameplay experiences, a lot more strategy um, because you both have full information, which was a little unsettling for me at first. You all know I'm, I'm a control player. I like to keep things secret. Um, so it, it was definitely, definitely interesting, uh, unique, and it leads to some pretty cool gameplay. Another core mechanic of the game is when units die, they leave what's called a corpse on the board. Um, and this essentially blocks the space where they died so that you can't play another unit on that space until a corpse is cleared out. Uh, there are cards and effects that remove corpses, um, and there's different things that interact with them. So you could have a unit that like removes a corpse to place a corpse on your other opponent's board, or you could have something that like uh, at the end of your turn it deals damage to a random unit based on how many corpses you have. So a bunch of stuff like that, um, which leads just to some more deck building decisions because some decks might interact with those, some might not. And then you have to decide, do you want to interact with them at all? Um, if you're playing a super aggressive deck, you might not have any corpse removal. Um, so it's just more game building or deck building decisions that you have to make. And then, yeah, you, you keep playing out uh, the turns. Whoever life total gets reduced to zero loses. Um, and I believe this did happen to me, so I'm pretty sure this is how it works. Uh, but when you draw the last of your cards at the end of the turn, um, after you've both drawn your your last of your cards, whoever's the lowest life total uh, in that situation loses. So you'll notice that the cards themselves have no mana value, um, and that makes this unique as well. If you've ever played Gwent, um, I, I played Gwent in the beta, and it, this kind of reminds me of that, where you can play any of the cards uh, whenever you want, you know, one per turn, but how it balances out the, the deck building isn't based on mana cost, but it's actually based on the card rarity itself. So each card has a rarity that's associated with it um, from S, A, B, and C, whereas S is the most rare card, C is the most common card. And when you're building a deck, basically each deck is exactly 18 cards and how it works is you get to have three S cards in your deck, four A cards, five B, and six C cards. Um, so this limits you from being able to just put in all your S cards that are you know, super powerful effects, game ending bombs, things like that. Um, and, and just kind of, so that's kind of how it balances out the the power level of cards so when you're looking at the cards themselves you can see that uh, there's the name of the card at the top of it underneath is a rarity symbol um, any special text on the card itself is in the middle of it like on the bottom and then you'll see if it's a unit it has a power value on the left a health value on the right similar to cards like magic um, in the bottom middle this is where you'll see uh, who like which faction this belongs to so if it's a neutral card that you can play in any deck you it'll say neutral but if it's a specific um, hero card it'll have their name so unlike magic with colors and in runeterra where you have different regions in fatal core when you're building a deck you choose a hero um, that represents the deck itself and each hero has its own unique play style which is really cool when you look at it uh, checking out the heroes you can see where it gives a little brief synopsis of who they are it gives a little background um, it shows you what their game board looks like so the position of the spaces where you can play cards and it also gives you a little bit about their play style so you can see joe as a swarm tempo uh, play style, whereas if you see something like Prisoner 218, which is what I've been playing, it's a very hard control. So this determines what types of uh, cards they get access to, whereas Prisoner may have more removal and things like that. Um, you can see someone like uh, Kahar may have more aggressive units. Uh, right now, those are the six heroes that are in the game. I don't know if they have plans to add more, um, but these are the six ones that they have right here, and uh, it, it works pretty well.
So since there are no monetary transactions in the game, acquiring cards can be done in a few different ways. So first you gain cards through in-game rewards, winning matches. Um, there's like tutorial matches if you go through, um, which the tutorial works pretty well. Um, you gain a bunch of cards to start your collection. There are also missions um, that you can check out, which each mission will reward you cards as well to kind of start building your collection. Um, the end game currencies are EF and PF, which you gain um, from your missions and from victories and stuff like that as well. So you can use these to buy card packs um, to increase your collection, or you can actually specifically buy the cards you want from the market. Uh, and the market's super unique. So the market, basically, you can sell cards that you uh, want to get rid of, and people, and you can buy uh, cards from other players that they're selling. So it has its own uh, in-game you know, financial market. So if there, there's a, you know, deck that's doing really well, the cards may become more expensive. Um, and that's, that's super interesting. I like the marketplace aspect um, where you can kind of like buy and sell cards that just kind of appeals to, appeals to me as someone who likes to play Magic the Gathering stock market. Um, so it, it's very interesting that they, they have that ability as well. So should you play Fatal Core? Uh, like most things, I would say it depends. So the gameplay is super unique. It makes your brain work really hard, um, which I'm a fan of. If you've ever played things like Gwent, I think you would like it this game. Um, but it plays very, very differently from other card games like Hearthstone, Runeterra, Magic the Gathering. Um, it's more strategic and it plays more like a strategy deck building game than uh, other uh, competitive card games that I've played before. Um, if you like mind games, the feeling of outsmarting your opponents, um, more of like a puzzle-like feel that this has, I'd say give it a try. You might enjoy it a lot. Um, there's definitely a pretty steep learning curve to the game. It takes a while to get used to, um, and it feels overwhelming when you first start, just just by the nature of it, it being completely different. The tutorial does a pretty good job of it, um, and I'm sure they're gonna have more tutorials when the game's fully released, which would help quite a bit, especially with different mechanics. Uh, I found myself having to read a lot of the cards. The cards themselves are pretty wordy, as well, if you come from Magic, I'm sure you're used to that. Um, so if, if you don't like the super steep learning curve, um, you, you might not enjoy the game. It's definitely very in beta. Um, so if you don't like the look and feel of like an unfinished, unpolished game, you might not enjoy it. Um, but if anything about the game does seem intriguing, I would go just give it a try, especially since it's 100% free to play and it's just in a browser. There's not really any like system requirements to it. You just play it in your browser of choice. Um, and I had a really good time with it. Like I, I ended up playing for quite a few hours today um, and I enjoyed it. I think the game's pretty decent. So if, if it does seem interesting at all, just go open up a browser and try it. You can just go to fatalcoretcg.com to play it. I also left a link in the description uh, of the game's Discord. Uh, everyone in their Discord has been super friendly, welcoming. The developers are uh, really awesome. Uh, and they're definitely trying to make like a very community driven uh, game with this. So if you have any feedback, uh, if you try it out, let them know what you like, what you don't like, um, all of that. And I'm sure they would love to hear what you have to say. So that's all I got for you. That is my overview, first impressions, um, what I think about the game of Fatal Core TCG. Um, it's definitely super, super interesting. Um, I didn't know what to think at first just because it is so different from any game that I've seen. The UI is definitely very different. The game board aspects, the deck building, uh, the small deck sizes. Um, so it, it's very unique. Uh, if you do give it a try, let me know what you think. Uh, write in the comments what you thought. Um, if you want to see more of this game, let me know as well um, if it's something you want me to stream or play more of. Um, I know a lot of people um, have been playing this as well. Um, so if it's something you like, let me know. If it's something you don't like, let me know. So yeah, that's all I got for you. Um, thanks for watching this. I appreciate you very much. Uh, and until next time, you stay saucy. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you like what you saw, it would mean a ton if you would hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell notification to be notified when I post some videos, share this with your friends, all that kind of stuff. Um, you're amazing, I love you, and until next time, you stay saucy.